What's up? It's Susie from Hey Grill Hey. Today I am butterflying a pork butt, smoking it a little bit hot and fast to make this beautiful mahogany pile of barbecue that stands before you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's make double the bark pulled pork today. All right, let's bust open this pork butt. Now when I've done these in the past, I've actually just split them in half. So it's in two big chunks. That way they cook in about half the time. You get still all the delicious bark on the outside. But we're gonna do a little something different today. We're gonna open it up flat like a book. Now the only complication of making that happen is the bone inside. So we're gonna have to work around that a little bit. But you can see there's a piece of the joint right here. The bone wraps through over to this side. So we will make accommodations for the bone as we go. I'm actually gonna use a fillet knife start on the bone side and kind of trace along the bone with my knife as I cut the pork butt open. All right, I got it across the bone on the top. I'm just gonna use the, my knife and cut it the rest of the way out. Boop, bone is out. We stayed as close to the bone as we could. It's not perfectly even, but I actually think we got pretty close. Now we're gonna season it up. I'm gonna hit both sides with my rib rub. You can grab this in my store, or you can use my sweet rub. I've got the recipes for both of these on my website, as well as the products you can buy if you want your life to be easy. Now this is really gonna kick off the bark development on the outside of our pork butt. And I'm excited about this. This is like twice the flavor for real. You're getting extra seasoning on the inside. And historically with pork butts, they're kind of bland on the inside. You have to do some additional seasoning after I shred them anyway to get the flavor where I want it. So I'm excited to see how this tastes right as it comes off the smoker. That looks pretty dang good. We're gonna be cooking this on our Masterbuilt gravity-fed charcoal smoker today. We've got lump charcoal, apple wood chunks, 275. I'm gonna let this go, I'm assuming for about four hours. Temp it, I'm looking to wrap at about 175 degrees. I'm just gonna do a foil wrap today without anything extra in it. I'm kind of treating these a little bit like super thick boneless ribs. It's got the fat content. It's going to have awesome porky flavor. So let's go get it on the smoker. It's like a sheet of meat, a meat sheet. Our pork shoulder has been on for mm, almost four hours. I'm gonna give it a temperature check, but just looking at it, I feel like we're gonna be right where I wanna be, which is around 165 degrees. I'm gonna lay out a big sheet of extra wide, heavy duty foil. I wanna be able to cover this pork butt and not have any of the juices leak out. If you are using smaller foil, just be careful and make sure you overlap and seal it really tightly. I want to wrap this as tightly as I humanly possibly can with as little air pockets in there as possible. I'm kind of treating this a little bit like a rib cook. Let's do it. Now we came in a little bit closer to 170, but I'm okay with that. I'm really happy with the color. You'll notice that halfway through my cook, I actually flipped this. Um, I started it with the fat cap up Ooh. and then decided I wanted to get a little bit more of an even cook on it and see if I could get some more color on both sides. So that's what I did. And now we're going to wrap it up. Normally when I'm doing ribs, I'll add things to the foil wrap like butter or brown sugar or juice. I'm not looking to braise. I wanna keep this as porky as possible, but I wanna speed the cooking process to the end and keep in as much moisture as I can. So that's why we're going with the foil wrap. This is funny, it kind of looks like a brisket. Okay. Back on the smoker, I don't know exactly how long this is gonna take, but at 275, where we're already at 170-ish degrees, I'm imagining this will take another two hours to get me up to 
my 195 at least temperature point. I would like to pull this closer to 200 degrees, but it's all going to be based on texture and how the pork feels. I want it to be really bendy, really mushy. I want my thermometer to slide in and out really easily. And that starts to happen around 195. So I'm going to come back and check in about two hours and then just keep testing until this gets to the internal temperature and texture that I'm looking for. What? Our temperature is reading between 202-ish in various parts of the pork, but more importantly, it feels really, really tender. So here are our next steps. I'm gonna carefully unwrap the foil. I'm just gonna remove the top layer of foil and kind of fold the edges to make a little bit of a boat situation. I'm gonna baste the top of it with my maple bourbon glaze, close the lid and let the sauce tack up in the smoker for another 20 or 30 minutes or so until I get this really beautiful color on top. All right, we've had it on for a half hour, so it smells amazing. I'm ready to take this pork shoulder off the smoker. This is beautiful. I mean, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. I put this on this morning at 9.30, so we're looking at six hours for this pork butt, which is a significant reduction in how long it usually takes to make pulled pork. Plus, I am wicked excited about the bark and the color that we got on here and the fact that it's on both sides. So now we just need to see if the texture is what we want if the fat content is what we want or if we rendered out too much fat. I have a feeling it's going to be amazing. Um, I'm actually just gonna shred it in the foil because it has all these yummy juices in there. My mouth is watering. I mean, conventional wisdom says that I should probably wait, right, and let it rest for like an hour or so. I'm just gonna shred it. This is experiment day. Probably if you're at home, rest it. <laughs> The pole is nice, friends. <laughs> oh, that is some juicy pulled pork. <laughs> I actually think I'm really happy with how the fat has rendered with having it separated. Sometimes you end up with a lot of fat in between when you have the whole muscle and you kind of have to pick it out. It seems most of it has melted into the meat itself. It's peeling into these beautiful strands. It's not mushy. Mm. I mean, it tastes like really delicious pulled pork. The seasoning is on point, which is one thing that I struggle with a lot when I'm cooking whole pork shoulders. It just never feels like it's seasoned all the way through, but this looks like every single piece has bark, every single piece has smoke, every single piece has flavor, and it's so tender and so smoky and so yummy. I might only ever cook pork shoulders this way from now on. I, I can seriously do this in six hours and get these results and this amount of bark and this flavor. I'm freaking sold. Listen, if you haven't tried this yet, give it a whirl at home. Let me know in the comments section how long it takes you, how it turned out for you, what you think about this double bark butterfly pork shoulder method. I can't wait to see your results. I hope they're as awesome at home for you as they are for me. Mm. We'll see you next time. Also oh, good. <laughs>